Hey, how you doing, Justin? Back with you today to talk about flexing time. Now, by that, I mean manipulating dynamics and speed to create a little bit of movement, contrast, and a kind of an emotional connection with the things that you play. Now, this is primarily something you're going to use when you're playing on your own. So when you're doing like a chord melody thing, or maybe just you and a vocal, you could get away with it. It doesn't work so well in the band scenario because everyone would have to be flexing the time, slowing down and speeding up at exactly the same moment. It can happen with bands that were really super tight. Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, two bands that spring to mind that used to manipulate the time kind of organically as a whole group. But it's a lot harder to do that and requires a lot more uh, listening and, and, and really being in sync with the band. But doing it on your own is really, really useful. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about where I learned it from, a particular teacher uh, that I learned it from. You'll notice, you might notice that I'm uh, holding a classical guitar and that's where I first encountered uh, this idea. Uh, I'd been studying at the Tasmanian Conservatorium of Music, classical guitar. I was, I think, in my third year and there was some problem with the teachers. I think a new teacher took over the whole con, like the, the director of the conservatorium changed, and he got his wife the gig teaching guitar, which I was a bit like, oh, I like my teacher John, and like he's got the sack for this guy's wife, and uh, the head of the strings department, Christian Voidovich, incredible cellist, uh, reassured me that this lady who was about to take over was really, really good, and I should, you know, I'd probably learn a lot from her. And uh, First lesson, I was a little bit apprehensive, and she sat down and she said, right, you haven't done any lute suite, so you should have a go at doing this. And she plopped down this Bach lute suite in E minor, uh, which was really difficult. She said, yeah, yeah, you, you can do this. Like, let's get stuck in, go away, and learn it, and come back the next week. So I sat about trying to get it under my fingers. It was very challenging. In fact, I've just pulled it out now to have a bit of a go. Uh, this was like... 25 years ago or something and it's still really difficult to play i'm struggling with it a bit but hopefully i can play just the very first bit enough to demonstrate what i'm talking about so let me have a go at playing it for you how i went back and played it to her after that first week it was something like this So that's more or less how it would have been when I played it back for Mandy after having that one week uh, to look at the tune. And she just looked at me and said, yeah, well, you've got the notes mostly right. And I was, you know, a bit like, what, what do you mean I've just got the notes right? Well, what, what more is there? And at that point, I was still like I hadn't got her trust as a teacher. You know, I was like, I'm not wasn't really sure how it was going to work and she picked up her guitar and she played it and it was beautiful and so so much better than the way what i'd done i was just like oh my god like yeah there's there's something really i'm missing something here and she was very cool and she said you need to think about the dynamics you need to think about the speed you need to think about putting some feeling into it it's not just trying to play it mechanically what's written on the page that's i think the thing with classical guitar is your interpretation of it you have to really learn to to find a feeling to put into the music because otherwise the, the music is two sets it's like improvising where you're making stuff up to express yourself you have to express yourself within the music which I think is a really good thing for me to do, and I'd encourage you to have a go, a little bit of a dabble in classical music if you haven't. And when I was like, okay, well, what exactly was it that you were doing that I wasn't doing? And she said, I was thinking about the falling leaf. And I was like, I didn't really get it. And she said, think about it. When the leaf falls, it goes like this. And there's this little moment where it stops before it kind of accelerates. So it's like really quiet, and then it goes down, it gets louder and faster, and then it goes back up and softer. It goes down, it gets louder, and then it gets louder and softer. So when you apply that to music, it suddenly gives it this real dynamic sense, particularly going faster and louder and then slower and softer. Really, really is a powerful thing. So I'm going to attempt now to, to add the falling leaf to it. Um, I have only literally been revising this thing today, and I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed about my, how poor my classical chops have got because they used to be okay. Um, anyway, let me see if I can uh, bring some of that out. I think this falling 
leaf metaphor is really beautiful for thinking about expression in music, particularly with dynamics and the speed of music, and particularly, again, for solo guitar. Works for classical guitar, works for other things as well. Uh, I really want to give a shout-out here to Amanda DeHaan, who was my teacher, who taught me this idea, uh, and lots of other stuff as well. She turned out to be a really great teacher, and I learned an awful lot from her. I just Googled her. I couldn't find her anywhere, so I don't know what's happened to her these days, if she's even still playing or teaching. But, yeah, she, she gave me a lot of really valuable insights into expression and and stuff that I don't think I would have learned in my normal kind of pop and rock and funk avenues which was what I was mostly into classical thing was just like keep my dad happy by going to university really uh, although I still enjoy it it's a recreational thing I don't think I'm ever going to be uh, teaching it for you as well as increasing the emotional impact of what you play it's actually a great tool as well for getting around really difficult parts when you've got a part of the a song that gets really tricky particularly again in classical land it's okay to kind of slow it down for that little bit so long as you do it it's not like you should slow down for the tricky bits it should be coming from a place of expression but you it's i think part of the game is to manipulate the way that you express that to allow yourself to get through any particularly tricky passages a lot of that sort of baroque stuff has these things that are just really really difficult under the fingers so having a way of expressing yourself where you speed up the bit before and then slow it down into that little bit and then back out the other side as long as it's gradual it can be a really super effective uh, tool so let me just give you a couple of other examples that are not uh, baroque music because i'm figuring that most of you are not uh, baroque players uh, let me check that this is yeah this is working so for example i just did a lesson on uh, yesterday by the beatles so uh, that would be another nice one where uh, you wouldn't have to play it exactly with a metronome if i go like a it, it's okay but I can definitely play with a tune like that to make it more expressive by thinking a little bit about where the speed is going and where the dynamics are going, and it makes a pretty big difference. It's not always something that's super obvious or extreme. You don't want to go from very quiet to very loud. That can make it just sound a bit awkward. But just having some of that idea, being able to express yourself that way, using this as a tool to make your music more... I don't even know what the word is. It's a tricky one to describe the way that... It has more emotional impact. You feel it more. You know, I've often seen guys like James Taylor or Neil Young when they're playing on their own. They do this sort of stuff. Their, their time is solid, but it's they can just slightly maneuver it around. It just it makes it feel so much more human and so much more musical. And this is a big part, I think, for anyone getting from like beginner to intermediate level. You want to be able to play simple stuff really well. And part of that is putting the feeling into it. I often talk about how it's important when you're strumming to feel it, feel relaxed and feel good. And when you're playing any sort of solo piece like that, particularly with kind of chord melody ideas, I think it's really important to find ways of expressing yourself through the music. And when you can get in touch with that sort of thing, the, your musical game will step up hugely. People who've got this, who've, who've figured it out, that there's this, there's a way of putting some of yourself through music that you're playing, whether it's your song or someone else's song, I think that's where it really, it, it sounds so much better when you hear people play that way. So a lot of talking, this is very kind of a conceptual lesson, uh, but I'm really hoping that it'll help you uh, understand the game a little bit and, and ways that you might find uh, you can express yourself better as a musician. I uh, hope all of that makes sense. Any problems or questions, let me know in the comments on the website. I do check in, uh, read them and answer as many as I can. Hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye-bye.